Before we covered the top 10 Disney villainesses, Disney have a dark imagination to come up with a lot of their iconic villains, so here's my top 10 Disney villains. Number 10. This is my land! I make the laws here. Governor Radcliffe. This villain, if you can remember, is from Pocahontas. He was a greedy, cruel and completely self-centered man. He landed on North America's soil in hopes of finding treasure to bring back to England for fame. He was even ready to start a war with the Native Americans because he thought they were all hiding the treasures from him. In actual historical events, he wasn't as horrible as Disney made him, and he was actually the one who marries Pocahontas, aged 13 at the time, and brought her back to England. There, she died only after a few years. Number 9. Clayton Clayton is the villain from Tarzan. Just looking at him, you would think he was a slimy jerk. He swings before he thinks and shoots without question. He went along to Africa with the porters to discover how gorillas behaved. But Clayton had other plans. He wanted to capture and sell the mysterious beasts for quick money. He ended up kidnapping the crew and almost got away with it if it wasn't for Tarzan, though there were a few casualties and his death was a bit gruesome. Number 8 the fates are here and you didn't tell me. Hades The god of the underworld and Greek god. This adaptation of Hades made the sassy god plot against his brother Zeus, and while it may have happened in actual mythology, because to be fair, Greek stories are like soap opera, Disney made Hades release the titans to take over Mount Olympus. Hades was unhappy with his full time job, and wanted to take it easy where the other gods lived. His plans were foiled by Hercules, who frees the captured gods and his father Zeus to send Hades back to the underworld. There, he makes a deal with Hercules when Megara, Hercules' actual wife in the myth, died and tries to save a soul and bring it back to her body. Hades is sorely disappointed when Hercules gains the full title of being a god for risking his own life for Megs. The last scene shows Hades getting attacked by the souls he is in charge of in the river Styx. Number 7 before a sultan, then you will cower before a sorcerer! Jafar Jafar is the sorcerer from Aladdin and the sultan's grand advisor. Using his cobra staff, he hypnotizes anyone to get what he wants. And what he wants is to be sultan. He finds the purest heart to enter the cave of wonders to retrieve the genie of the lamp. Of course, when things don't go according to his plan, he devises other plans to get the ultimate power and become a genie himself, only to get trapped inside his own lamp and serve a master. Number 6 Taxes! <laughs> taxes! Beautiful, lovely taxes! <laughs> Prince John Disney's adaptation of Robin Hood has Prince John as a lion and constantly sucks his own thumb and rubbing his ears when upset. He is rather immature and is really greedy. He loves money and jewels. He often finds a way to rob and swindle money from his subjects, which leaves the whole country in poverty. He forces the sheriff to double, even triple taxes on his people, taking every last coin. This, of course, leads up to Robin Hood to save the people, stealing from the rich and giving it to the poor. Number 5. Hans I don't think there was anyone who wasn't upset by Hans' sudden betrayal. He seemed so perfect for Anna. He was loving, funny, cheeky. But within an instant, it was flipped over and his true intentions were revealed. Hans wanted a country of his own to rule, and with Elsa now out the way, all he needed to do was get rid of Anna. He was 12th in line to get his own crown, so he decided this would be the best way to get what he wanted. 
he was willing to let Anna die and kill Elsa and place the blame on her. Number four. Nothing but abandoned opal mines, as far as the eye can see. And dead ahead is home sweet home. Percival C. McLeish. In The Rescues Down Under, McLeish is a known poacher of rare and exotic animals. He sells animals for their hides. When he finds out that a little boy named Cody has found where the Golden Eagle lives, he kidnaps the boy in order to try and get him to tell him the whereabouts of the Golden Eagle's nest. Accompanied with his monitor lizard Joanna, he terrorizes the Australian outback in search of the Golden Eagle. No one could tell what could have become of Cody after if this poacher had found the eagle on his own. Number 3 Scar Long live the king. Scar is the brother of Mufasa, whom is the king of Pride Rock. He is jealous of Mufasa and wants to become king himself. But once his little hairball of a nephew is born, his plans to take over become even more complicated. He now has to get rid of both his older and stronger brother and his bouncing nephew. Though Scar didn't want to get his own hands dirty, he organizes a stampede of wild beasts while his nephew is sat waiting for a surprise from his father. Simba is saved by Mufasa, but not before Mufasa is hanging off the edge of a cliff above the stampeding wild beasts. Scar does get his hands dirty and throws his brother off the cliff. Simba is told it's all his fault by his own uncle and told to run away. While the little cub is running, Scar gets his hyena henchmen to run after the cub in order to try kill Simba. In the end, Scar is killed by his own friends when he is defeated by Simba. Number 2 Lord Frollo. This holy man has an unnatural hatred of gypsies and wants to clean all of Paris of their kind. You first see Lord Frollo chasing after a gypsy woman begging for sanctuary at the church of Notre Dame. He ends up running her down on the steps of the church, causing her to fall and, what is assumed, crack a skull and die. There, he finds a deformed baby and attempts to drown it in the nearby well. However, the pastor of the church stops him, saying what he is doing is unholy and he will be judged harshly for it. He of course ends up keeping the child, but forces him to be the bell ringer of Notre Dame. Later on, Lord Frollo becomes entranced and obsessed with Esmeralda and forces her to choose him or to burn at the stake. He calls her a witch for seducing him and attempts to burn her at the stake in front of all of Paris. His end comes to him when Quasimodo saves Esmeralda and he falls from one of the gargoyles upon the church. Number 1 No one's slick as Gaston, no one's quick as Gaston, no one's next as incredibly thick as Gaston, for there's no man Gaston. This self-absorbed man is the embodiment of the nice guy. He thinks of women as owing him their attention. He wants to marry Belle and tries multiple times to get her to marry him even though she has declined and denied him. He goes on to insult her about being book smart and not being a real woman. Finally, he gets angry when he finds out she loves someone else and takes it upon himself to get the whole town to take up arms against the beast. His fury and self-absorbed nature makes him want to kill the beast and become the town hero. When he attempts to land the fatal blow on the beast, he slips from the roof and falls to his death below. Anyway, I hope you like this week's roundup. There's a lot of interesting characters in the Disney universe, and if you want to check out more, click here for my top 10 Disney villainesses. And if you want to see my previous top 10, Click here for my top 10 Silent Hill facts you may not know. There's some interesting things in that game. Anyway, thanks for watching and goodbye.